Look, I get it. Nobody wants to get caught naked outside. But having beautiful spicy boudoir photos in outdoor locations is also pretty amazing. So how do you make that work? How do you find a beautiful location that of course is popular because it's beautiful and do spicy, perhaps less than clothed photos at it? Well, let me tell you how I do it. Hi, I'm Caleb. I'm a boudoir photographer based in Bend, Oregon. And if there's one thing that Bend is known for, it's its beautiful setting. We're right at the base of the Cascade Mountains, right at the beginning of the rugged high desert. We have 300 days of sunshine. We've got insane amounts of public land, so I do a lot of my boudoir shoots outdoors in nature. I want to give you four tips on how to make sure that you're doing your outdoor boudoir shoots in a way that's safe, a way that's positive, and a way that isn't going to get somebody mad at you. So, tip number one, check your local and state laws. Here in Oregon, we have pretty lax public nudity laws. As long as you're not doing anything explicitly sexual, you can pretty much be naked almost anywhere. Except, weirdly enough, Portland, which when you think of public nudity in Oregon, you, you think of Portland, right? But they have a local law that nominally prohibits it. Now, do they enforce that? Not really that I've heard of, but it's still very important to know those local laws and like what consequences they could carry. Now, I know a lot of the rest of the country, particularly in the South, particularly in the Bible Belt, have a lot more strict public nudity laws. Like I had somebody from Louisiana reach out to me who wanted to do an outdoor shoot down there and I was looking into their laws and apparently in Louisiana, any sort of public nudity is considered obscenity, which can be a felony. Now, of course, we look at like Mardi Gras pictures and stuff and that's common, but again, knowing the laws and knowing the consequences that they could carry are really important and really kind of that risk management calculus that you have to do. Tip number two is be as discreet and respectful as possible. As the old saying goes, discretion is the better part of valor. So of course it's just kind of common sense to be as respectful as possible of others, especially in places where there could be lots of other people, particularly minors. And so that can kind of go into your planning for your session as well. When do you think that this location that you're going to will have fewer people? Maybe plan for that. Even if the lighting isn't 100% what you're hoping for, even if you're wanting like a golden hour shoot at a waterfall, well, if you think that that's gonna be a, po a point where there's gonna be a lot of people there, maybe just just plan for a bit different lighting. Now in this shoot, we assumed that people wouldn't really be there early in the morning on a Saturday, because who doesn't like to sleep in on a Saturday? But we were wrong, and so we kind of had to deal with that, and that kind of leads to tip number three. Number three, patience is a virtue. So in this shoot in particular, we waited over a half an hour in order to make sure that there weren't any people who were gonna be looking or the people who were there like would be kind of cool with it. So we kept an eye on both ends of the trail coming up and we had to wait through a lot of like families with kids taking selfies, old people resting on the bench, tourists getting a whole bunch of pictures of the waterfall, which is unfortunately just kind of part of the game. But while we were just waiting there, we were like figuring out the exact angles that we were gonna take the pictures at, figuring out the exact posing, all that kind of stuff. So we made use of the time that we had to be patient with, which kind of leads into tip number four. And tip number four is get in, get out. So have your plan all set up for the pictures that you're wanting to get, for the poses that you're wanting to have your client strike, all that. And make sure that you get everything that you need, but also don't overstay your welcome. And don't get too greedy with trying to get as many shots as possible. Have something baggy like right out of frame that you can throw on quickly as soon as you're done with the shots. And be ready to, as soon as you're done with pictures, just get out of there. We want to minimize our impact. We want to minimize the time that somebody could get offended by us being there. So just get in, get the shot, and move on. And also lastly, kind of on that, like sometimes you're not gonna get the exact shot that you were hoping for, and that's gotta be okay. That's just life sometimes. You're not always gonna get the exact frames that you were hoping for. You're not always going to, you know, nail it perfectly, but that's gotta be okay, because that's life. And so you have to make sure that you're okay walking away. You have to make sure that you're okay saying, this was good enough. So those are my tips on how to do an outdoor boudoir shoot, particularly in places where there might be more people than you anticipated. Thanks for watching. Again, my name is Caleb and I'm a boudoir photographer based in Bend, Oregon. You can follow me on TikTok. You can follow me on Instagram. You can follow me on threads. I'd love to have you join my Patreon where I post at least once a week, showing behind the scenes, showing photos as they were meant to be seen without any censorship or cropping and not having to worry about what the social media algorithm is interested in that week. Let me know if you like this kind of video where I break down my processes a bit more. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.